Hey, what's up you guys? My name's Lindsay and you're watching my channel, A Sight to See, and today we're exploring Bozeman, Montana. I have been here for the past month working at a hostel, which you'll see in my next video, but I think I have learned enough about this place to give you all a complete guide on what to eat, see, drink, where to party, where to stay, what to do. So let's get started. Do some exploring? Yeah! <laughs> oh, yeah. oh! It's had it all. Look, Treasure State Hostel Dog. <laughs> all right, let's jump right into it. There are so many amazing places to check out directly on the main street of downtown Bozeman that if you're not looking to drive much, you really don't have to. There's honestly something for anything you might be looking for. Let's start with places to eat. If you're looking for a place to grab breakfast, you are in luck because you have quite a few options. Main Street Over Easy would definitely be a great choice if you are on a budget. You can get your basic breakfast of two eggs, hash browns, and toast for only $7, which is a great price for the location. They also have vegetarian and gluten-free options. Another super popular breakfast spot is Jam. Make sure you're ready for a long wait though because there is always a line out the door for this place. With its 1,500 reviews on Google, its rating stands at a 4.7, so that kind of speaks for itself. If you are in the mood for some Mexican food, my two best recommendations are El Rodeo and Ramirez Food Truck. They both have quite average pricing, but are well worth it. And if you're looking for some Japanese food, my suggestion is Tenoshi. They have amazing ramen and noodle bowls, and all the ingredients are super fresh. This was actually my first restaurant in Bozeman, and it really set a high standard. Hooked is another great place if you're looking for some sushi and Instead. If Italian food is on your mind, I recommend the Blackbird. They have average price pasta, pizza, and alcohol in a more upscale type environment, and it's highly recommended from a lot of the locals that I've met. And finally, if you are looking for a more American food type environment, then definitely check out Montana Ale Works. This place is a little bit of everything, including burgers, sandwiches, steaks, and is very popular. It's also a great place to have some beer, shoot some pool, and there's also a patio. Honestly, there are so many places you could try, but these are some of my favorites and the favorites of the locals that I've met here. Yo, I just got the sickest outfit at the thrift store for six bucks. Ready to be a camp counselor at least. Couldn't miss you guys with the hat. Hey! You got the hat. The hat and the dog. <laughs> the hat and the dog. The hat and the dog. Oh. <laughs> yes! This counts what? Yes! Counts counselor Lindsay! We both got cute thrift store things. I really like this hat. It's so fun. This whole outfit, counselor six drama. bucks. All right, now it's time to talk about the best places to get a drink because if there's one thing that Bozeman likes to do besides outdoor adventures, it's consume alcohol. It's hard to walk even one block without passing a bar, but that doesn't mean they are all equal. So here are my favorites. If you're looking for a chill vibe with good whiskey drinks and a cheap happy hour, then I suggest the Copper Bar. It's underground and has a really cool atmosphere. Their main entrees are quite pricey, but you can't beat $4 whiskey drinks between three to six for happy hour, and they make them really strong too. Speaking of cheap drinks, another favorite of mine was the Crystal Bar. It's a dive bar with great prices, some slot machines, and a rooftop patio in the summer months. They also allow dogs. I met this cute one there one night who just wanted me to play with him, and it was too cute. Just don't try to get in with a fake ID because they love collecting them. Are these fakes too? That's so embarrassing. It's so embarrassing. Now, if you're looking for a dive bar with a pool table and live music, I would recommend The Hop. I went here a ton of times and even got to watch my friend play a few songs. Welcome on a Tuesday night. It's a great atmosphere. I was getting tequila sodas for $3.50 and there's always great music to be played. Right next door to The Hop is the Molly Brown Bar. They're pretty similar with pricing, but the Molly is much bigger and has a lot more pool tables. They host events such as live music, bingo night, and trivia night. Now if you're looking for more of a speakeasy type bar, then you should check out Kitty Warren. It has somewhat of a secret entrance and for good reason. I don't think I ever would have stumbled across it if a friend didn't show me. Definitely check out their website before going and learn how to get in. Jeff, are you drinking already? No. Come on. Agua. Come on. Agua. <laughs> I guess the concept of to-go cups is uh, not a thing that we have at the hostel. <laughs> These are to-go cups. Yeah. You're drinking out of a glass jar. <laughs> straight, straight 
straight vodka. <laughs> so those are my drinking bar recommendations, but these are the bars I would recommend if you're specifically looking to party. I myself love to dance, and I also love finding the places with the best energy to do that. One of my favorites is the Rock and R Bar, specifically because this place has a lot going for it. You can order food here, play pool here, and there's a dance floor. And people like to go pretty hard and tend to climb up on the bar to dance. They also have different theme nights like western music nights and trivia nights. Another good one is El Camino. They have dollar beer nights and a decent amount of space to dance in as well. But to be completely honest, my favorite place to party was Bar 9. They have cheap drinks, great party music to dance to, any plank to jump up and dance on, and the world famous bucket night. Bucket nights are every Thursday and you can get an entire bucket of your favorite mixed drink for $12. The floor gets incredibly full and a lot of time it's hard to move, but I always had a great time and the vibes are awesome. <laughs> the clip is not sped up, that dog moves that fast. <laughs> She's like going in her <laughs> Hey, come here. Okay. She's like, I'm independent. <laughs> now, if you're looking for beautiful sights, not only did you come to the right state, but the right city as well. The closest place to get some great views from downtown Bozeman would be Pete's Hill Park. I absolutely adore this park. It's the perfect size. You can get views of all the mountains around you. There are so many dogs running around. It's perfect for sports like frisbee and for having picnics. I would just sit up at the top for a while and read with the beautiful views all around me. There's also a cemetery up there that I heard people like to hang out in, but that's not really my thing. But hey, if you're into it, then go for it. Cleo certainly was. Troublemaker. It's great for running and biking too. I saw a lot of different workout classes being held here throughout the past month. If you're looking for a slightly more strenuous hike, then you should check out the M Trail. It's only a five to 10 minute ride from downtown, but provides some insane views. There are two routes you can take, a steeper, more direct route, and then there is a more winding and curvy route. They both lead to the same M and beautiful view though. Both are less than two miles round trip and won't take you longer than two hours to complete. Also keep in mind, bikes are not allowed. Across the street is the Drinking Horse Mountain Trail. It's a 700 foot climb and 2.2 miles round trip and will also give you some insane views. Now if you're already in the area and are looking to go a little further then you absolutely have to go to Yellowstone National Park. I have an entire vlog coming up next about this park and why it should truly be on your bucket list because it almost feels like walking onto an alien planet. But just to give you a little heads up if you are interested, it is $35 per car to enter the park or free with your National Parks Pass. There are so many things to check out and trails to hike here, but there is no direct shuttle from Bozeman, so renting a car would give you the most out of your trip if you didn't bring one. The closest a shuttle can get you is to Big Sky Resort right outside of West Yellowstone for about $45 one way, but it does run at really weird times. But if you can get there, you absolutely have to. You won't regret it, especially since you're only an hour and a half away from this crazy nature. Aside from all the parks and trails to see here, another huge recommendation you'll get from me is the Bozeman Hot Springs. Hot Springs Squad! Yeah, let's Woo! go! <laughs> oh my gosh. I've been to a hot springs before, but never one like this. The clips that I got from this were from my friend because I was too busy enjoying myself while I was here. But this place has three hot springs outside, fire blasting over the sunset, live music on Thursdays and Sundays, and inside there is a sauna, a steam room, two more hot springs, a cold pool, and a giant warm pool. There's also a gym for an extra fee. It's $17 a person on weekdays and $21 on the weekends, or $55 for a monthly pass. Totally worth it if you're going more than twice. Some other things to check out around Bozeman that I didn't necessarily get to experience but heard about from, from co-workers would be the Museum of the Rockies, the Aspire Rock Climbing Gym, and the Montana Grizzly Encounter. And if you need a nice place to get some work done with free Wi-Fi, which I look for often, don't be afraid to check out the public library. I spent a ton of time here editing on my laptop and checking out the books they have. I love going to places that don't pressure you to spend money on anything just to be there. Oh. No. Oh. <laughs> Go drink water first. What's so good about the drink myself? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jeff. You can get another one of these. Let's go. Uh, no. All right. Now I might be biased, but this is my favorite place to stay on the entire strip. Yeah. 
So, of course I recommend the hostel I worked at as the best place to stay in Bozeman. And to be completely honest, I'd say the same thing even if I never worked there. And here's why. The prices of accommodations skyrocket in the summer, but the hostel's prices stay the same. You can get a bed in a dorm for as cheap as $29 a night and a single private room starting at just around $45. And that's pretty insane considering you can step out the door and be right outside in the middle of everything. But if hostels aren't your thing, I would recommend the RSVP Hotel. It has adorable rooms and a super cute cafe on site. My friend stayed here while visiting me so she could work remotely during her stay and loved every second, so I can totally vouch for it. Aside from all of that, here are a few final tips I have for you about Bozeman, Montana. If you are going to be walking around downtown, most parking places have a two hour time limit or will make you pay, but if you are on a budget, you can park your car for free on Lammy Street all day and night and be completely fine. The weather also changes very fast here. It can be sunny one hour and hailing the next. Just be prepared for that no matter what time of year you visit. Alright you guys, thank you so much for joining me today on this little walk around Bozeman and like honestly, this town is amazing. I wish I could stay here longer. One month wasn't even enough, so you definitely have to come take a trip here. Make sure you subscribe because next week I will be telling you all about my workaway experience. I will catch y'all on the next one.